dew gland on any animal, just go ahead and chuck it. Yeah, Except the thymus gland, right? It, it could be, it could be part of the lymph node system. Could be an adrenal. We don't know. I'm not a vet. I know you do not want to eat it. Now, when we do a leg of veal, we are very cautious when we do a leg of veal, number one, because of the cost, right? Mm -hmm. But second of all, and the most importantly, is that we need to take this thing apart into every single individual muscle. Okay? We cannot have two or three muscles still attached to each other like we would with beef or even pork, okay? Veal, the veal leg, when we're making for cutlets and scallopini, has to be broken down into every single individual muscle. That's the difference. So if somewhere along the line somebody asks you why do we break down a leg of veal differently than around the beef, we're not talking about the separation. We're not talking about the fact that you're split down the middle versus split in half. We're talking about the fabrication of it. When we fabricate this thing we're taking it down as far as we can possibly take it. So that when we slice our cutlets or our scallopinis there is no seams. There's no connective tissue. There's nothing. It's just one solid piece of tender, good meat. That would be important to remember. Another reason why it's so expensive is because the because the labor that's involved to do something like that. Cover on a on a ham, for example, the same as like you do. Uh, not usually more, but once you get the fat off. that pushing that we do when we break the carcass to get that top layer of fat off. Again, you're going to take it off in layers, be extremely careful, just like this. You see he's just peeling off what's excessive. When you get on a ham, you know, you're going to take off that outside layer and then it's going to expose all that silver skin. So you'll get to a point where it looks like this. Plus they're just comparing it to it. They're not saying, you know, a ham is a ham. If you're trying, if you're trying to practice the breakdown. If you're trying to practice and you want to get that, you want to layer off that ham, that, that fat, so you can get down inside your head. You would want to layer it off, yes. Get it out of the way. Get it to look like this before you start. Because really, your, your whole objective is learn how to do this. Yeah, well, there's a lot of seams here. Yeah, you wait, watch. It's going to take me about 30, 25 minutes to do this. I think this is the most What is this? That's your tri tip right there. Uh, okay. What does it look like on beef? A loin. Looks like a loin. What kind of loin? Tenderloin. Tenderloin butt. So whoever takes this piece, you'll take it as one piece, but you're going to bring it back to me as three pieces. There's one ear, here's another ear, and the center. Okay? So that's kind of like the pismo? That's the, well, that's the head of the pismo. Okay. The rest of that pismo is on the loin. Okay. The short loin. See, when he did the beef, he took that whole tenderloin out in one piece. 
here this has been cut and it's cut it because it's cut differently you wind up with that in this piece No, it's not really, not at all. When you see when that piece is finished and we start making it to cutlets, you see how few cutlets you get out of that. Tend tender as can be, but not user friendly, not a good shape. You gotta be really good with your knife to make it look like something. No, if you accumulate enough of them and you've accumulated them in your freezer over time and you want to run a lunch special on, you know, veal medallions, you know, you could do like a little appetizer with veal medallions. As in terms of being comparable to beef, it's not. Somebody's choking out there, huh? Probably somebody who ate my lunch. <laughs> the beef cut off here each bone stays on the round of beef okay this the loin had the sirloin section the big hip bone that I took out remember I took the big hip bone out mm -hmm. we had top sirloin butt if we're if we're now going to go to the next species that we're going to talk about is going to be pork not here not here but right about in here in the middle okay. you'll see it much better but there's your, your whole pelvic bone little hip bone now we get into the real money. the bone a little bit and then caught the seam. This you have to catch the seam pretty much immediately. Because we don't want to cut into any muscles. Yeah. And when you cut this, you know, you'll see in grocery stores when they have like veal cutlets, you'll see like those little silver streaks. That means that they did not take the time yeah. to take this and get all that silver. Because that silver is good. Yeah. Well, most of the time they don't know how. Well, that's it. Well, they couldn't if they didn't. But he's absolutely right. They don't know how. So that's the difference. Is when a butcher does this, someone who knows what they're doing, they're going to get all the silver skin out and you're not going to have those little streaks. Top round. Does it look familiar? Okay. Money. Big money, top round, untrimmed, cap on. You're still looking around eight, nine dollars a pound. That's a single muscle. Nope. Three, 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 three muscles actually. Mm -hmm. right? How many pounds do you think that is? It's probably about seven, eight. You get ready to take a cap on, it'll be less. That's like a seventy dollar piece of meat. Yep. Okay. 
sound of money. Taking the meat off the bone. Tell them how clean, how clean the dogs had to be of the cars. But the flies wouldn't go on them, then they were clean enough. Wow. Too much on there. How soft are real bones? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how soft real bones are. They need a, a joint replaced. Okay. Yeah. See how he's bleeding? It's really hard to get. Kneecap. Okay. Is he? No, I said you send that to him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was here. Just in case. Okay. So I'm walking on this one. Just like before, if you wouldn't eat something, don't leave it on the piece of meat. You can do a lot of damage here if you don't know what you're doing, if you're not careful. Two years. Okay, there's a there's the hip. That would be your top sirloin butt if it was beef. How often do you get one of these in your shop? I used to do every Wednesday, every Tuesday. No, every other. Or? No, I don't hardly sell veal at all anymore. It's pretty much all pork. The market, huh? Pork, baby. That's it. I am a pork store. You got a loan just for, well, no, I'm going to do that now. Does everybody know what that is? Can anybody first, tell you what's going to be in there? Can you identify this whole piece first? Is it the bottom round? It's the bottom round, yes. Eye round. Eye round. round. Who's neck? Who's neck? Oh. What's this muscle? The bottom the round. Eye round, I heard it. Heel. Heel. Okay. Oh. I wasn't sure. Okay, bottom round, that's okay. It's, it's okay to be wrong, man. That's why you're here, so I can see, so I can show you. There's nothing wrong with making mistakes, as long as you know how to fix them. Okay? It's when you stop trying to fix your mistakes is when you're in trouble. Okay? You're all going to make mistakes. If that wasn't the case, then you probably wouldn't have a job here. So, mistakes are job security. That's <laughs> <laughs> a joke. It's a failed attempt at humor. Someday I'm going to get a new joke book. <laughs> Someone's going to go home in this class tonight and eBay meat jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to come in with a book in about a week. Oh, I have, uh, I think, three students in this class that are challenging me to um, identificating, identification of pork cutlets versus veal cutlets. I have three that swear up and down they can tell the truth. Oh, <laughs> so I, I, I try the challenge. More, I, more willing to give up on that. <laughs> but, but you can't tell the difference, or they swear that what? That they can tell the difference. Between you want to cook them and give it to them? No, no, no. Gonna, you never did this with me? No. Oh, I'll do it. I'll show you. Okay. The wager is a bag of peanuts. 
Yeah, you guys better just go in on the family side. <laughs> but how are they being cooked? There's your your uh, centerpiece of the heel. We're not going to cook them. Just raw. You can't tell the difference. Even cooked, I guarantee you won't tell the difference. I would bet you five to one M and M's. <laughs> you better look at family. Put all that connective tissue in there. If I sat there and tried to take all that out, you get about 17 different muscles right there. That's crazy. Yeah, so that you know what that happens? It's right to the trim. Is that, is that done yet? It's not done yet. Herb, just down here. Good butcher goes through his trim twice. That's right. takes this piece, you're going to have a very difficult time. I want you to know that this is the most difficult piece on the entire table to denute. So whoever takes that piece, I highly recommend you have a very sharp knife. Okay, very sharp knife. Uh, this is our bottom round. Very thick, heavy piece of uh, silver skin here, connective tissue. All right, we're going to put that right in the garbage because that will not grind. Then we get up underneath it. Do a nice pullover. If you're not careful with this piece, you can do a lot of damage on the toes. surgeon in all of us. Mm -hmm. Now, over here on the other side, we have that same heavy silver skin that goes underneath here to hold on a separate muscle here. We're going to take that second piece off. Right now, this is a bottom round. In a minute, it's going to be a bottom round flat.
on the beef, that was the hard one to follow the grain right there, too. Mm -hmm. We've done lamb prosciutto in here. How's the last? It's not good. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, again, I don't think I would ever stand on line for it. Okay, so here's your bottom round. All the bottom has to be cleaned off, completely denuded. Okay. I would say get that skin off of there. Get that grandma skin off of there first. Mm -hmm. Kill it. Okay. Yeah, I'm always choking up as I go along. Yeah. You have to do that. Okay. Bottom round. Now, we'll get into some more intricate cutting here. Okay, what you saw so far is pretty much every day. Now we're going to get into some detail. This is that uh, top sirloin butt or the hip section. Remember what I did with this piece? If it was beef, do you remember what I did to it? Um, yep. Top sirloin butt, cash cow. I broke it all down to little individual steaks, right? Yep. No, yeah. yeah you don't do that with this one, please? Huh? With this one here, we take the muscles apart, but it sliced into cutlets. There's the rat piece that was on the bottom that we took off just for trim. It's still there. usable trim at this point. See, I'm looking for that silver screen. See? I gotta find that silver screen. So easy to lose it. It's easy to lose on beef. Get right back on it right here. This silver skin diminishes as it gets to the end. get the opportunity to work with somebody who can teach you how to do this? If they tell you to get out of bed 3 o'clock in the morning, do it. Okay? Because this is what separates the men from the boys. Stuff like this. So, yeah, I'll teach you how to do a lady deal. Be here at 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. I'll be there at 2.30. Just to make sure I didn't miss it. Crazy, isn't it? Like a surgeon. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's like the muscle by muscle. You have to. You can't have any of this stuff in the cutlet. You have to take it apart. In all honesty, the, the leg of veal is the most difficult thing a butcher has to do. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. I think Chef Schnell would probably agree with me. I can ask him if he's not. diminishes here. It's to a point where you just can't see it anymore. Okay, so now what we do with this piece, whoever takes this piece back to the bench, what I tell you to do is this. Clean it at the surface only. Okay, top and bottom. And then as we slice the cutlets, then we'll get down into that cluster of connective tissue.